So this is a tool called Site, which can be accessed at site.ai. When I first started using this tool, I thought it was little more than a citation tracker. But it actually does so much more than that. You can use it to look at uh, individual papers. So for example, if I put in the DOI of a paper that I published previously, it will come up with details about that paper. It will tell me how many times it's been cited by publications, how many references, and you can get some metrics out from that. And initially I thought that was really what Cite was about. Where Cite's real power comes in though, is its AI assistant. And you can think of that as a little bit like ChatGPT, but with a science twist. So you can ask semantic questions and get a fully referenced response back. And if you go over to the settings here, so this little cog or the settings just below the search bar, you can start to modify that search to tweak the outputs. So for example, you can change the year range for the, for the search. You can look at different publication types, the output style you can change so you can have it as different uh, referencing formats, the response length, how long you want the output to be, so how many publications you want it to consult. The higher the number here, the longer it does take to produce an output, whether you want to search by uh, sort of things like relevance or recency, number of citations, and you can also select individual journals as well. So there are a couple of ways that you can use this tool. The first is if you want to write, say, a section of text to help you get the writing process started. So you can type something like, And what site will do is behind the scenes, it will search millions of papers and it will run individual searches. And what I really like about site is it gives you details of the search strategy that it's used. So what searches that it's put in and those are all clickable. So you can actually go through and look at those later. And then it looks at the publications that have been consulted over here on the right hand side. It does take a little bit of time. It's a little bit slower than something like ChatGPT, but it does go into a lot more depth and it does find some really great papers. And once the output has been created, you will see that it's actually got the uh, citations inserted into the text here. If you hover over it, it gives you some output, so the number of citations it's had. You've also got all of the citations over here in the right-hand side in the dashboard. And you can go through that. You can click on those individual papers to go and find those papers. You can click on things like cite, so it will give you the output for that if you want to use that in a citation manager or you can output all of them either as a CSV, a bib text, or an RIS file, which you can then import into your citation manager like Sotero, Mendeley, EndNote. And what I really like about this is that these references tend to be very accurate. Of course, you do have to go and check them yourself, make sure that they do say what the set of tool is saying. They actually say, so you've got to do your due diligence as with any of these AI tools, but it's a really nice way of getting that writing process started. What you can also do with these papers is add them to a dashboard uh, and we'll talk a little bit about what the dashboard tool is a little bit later on in the video. The second really powerful way that you can use this tool is to find supporting literature for text you've already written. So if I start a new chat, I'm going to paste in uh, a question. So I want to find supporting literature for the following paragraph of text for a paper entitled Navigating New Norms, a Systematic Review of Digital Tool Development. So this is the paper that I'm writing at the moment. I've already written the introductory paragraph. And what I've done is I've removed the references that I've got in that text. And I want to see whether or not site comes up with similar text. And then I'm going to hit go. And again, what it's doing in the background is searching for the citations which will support that paragraph of text that I have put in. So this is really powerful when you perhaps read some information in a paper you might have forgotten to cite or reference it at a time but you know that the fact that your information is correct. And so this tool site is really good at finding those supporting references for you. Again, it does take a little bit of time to do this. So it's not the quickest tool out there, but it does produce really good results. And again, you can see here that initial paragraph now contains some citations, which are over here in the right hand side. So I can go and double check those. So I can go through and look, you can see how many citations it had. So probably quite a good citation, 733 papers have cited it. What it's also done though, is it's expanded that text for me slightly. I didn't ask it to do that, but it can be very helpful if you're in the, the early stages of writing and you want to know where you could potentially take your introduction a little bit further. The key thing, as with any of these AI tools I've said before, is you must go and do your due diligence. So you need to go and check and read the papers to make sure that they do support your work appropriately. Now, site doesn't stop there. 
So if you click over into your profile up in the top right and click on tools, then it will bring you to this dashboard tool. Now you can create new dashboards. So if you want to import your Zotero library or Mendeley library, you can, but you can also input papers using DOIs or you can manually upload them using CSV files. And what these dashboards will do is allow you to keep projects separated from one another. You also have a thing called reference checks. So this is a really nice tool for checking to see whether the citations within a paper are still up to date, whether they are still valid. So what I've done is I have already uploaded a paper into the reference check. So this is a paper that I published a couple of years ago. And you can see that it goes through and it checks the individual references. So this citation here has had a correction, but that was way back in 1995, so not something that we need to be concerned about. But again, it will give you all of the output metrics for the papers that you've cited, so how many times they've been cited, how many areas of research conflict with that, so they're contrasting citations. And so if you've got lots of contrasting citations, then that might be an area of controversy that you want to look in a little bit more detail around. You can also create saved searches. So here, for example, I've got a saved search around the use of generative AI in the higher education assessment. And it will also create alerts that will send me emails if new papers are published which match those saved searches. So that's a really nice way of being able to try to keep on, on top of the literature so that you don't have to keep running manual searches. It's just it's all done in the background for you. And it will send you emails when new papers are published. The last thing the site does really well is this section down here called My Research. So arguably your own research is one of the most important things you need to keep track of as a researcher. If you either upload your individual citations or you can link it to ORCID, then it will basically claim those papers for you uh, and upload them so you can go through and it will tell you how many citations you've got for each one of the, the, your papers. You've also got this metrics tab down here, which gives you a breakdown of the, the publications so 68.2% of the citations are in open access. For example, I've only self-cited myself 0.2% of the time, which means I'm hopefully an ethical researcher. And rather guttingly, no Nobel laureates have cited my work. So if any Nobel laureates are watching this video, you know what to do. It also gives you the different journals that have cited you, the authors that are citing you the most. And so this can be a nice way to explore authors who are working in, in a similar field. So lastly, Site has a Chrome extension. If you install that extension, when you go to websites such as Google Scholar, when you're trying to find papers, then you get this nice little bar down at the bottom, which gives you a breakdown of those stats from Site. And if you click on that little bar, essentially what it does, is it will pull that paper straight into Site for you. So you can go and add that to dashboards. You can start to interrogate that paper in all the ways that we've described in this video. So that site is a really powerful AI assistant for your research. There is a free version which limits some of the functionality, but you can also subscribe. So the pricing for this is about £14 a month if you pay on a monthly basis, or you can pay for a year up front, which saves you 40%, and that works out at about £105-110 for the year. But it's a really powerful tool. I think it's worth the subscription because it saves you so much time just trying to keep on top of the literature and finding those references to support your work.